Global warming is an urgent problem. Scientists believe global warming will bring wider temperature swings. I wanted to see if temperature changes affect an organism's development. 16 cecropia moth caterpillars were kept at a constant temperature. 15 caterpillars were cycled daily between fluctuating temperatures to mimic climate change. Survival rates were similar, however the growth rates were not. Caterpillars in the fluctuating temperature treatment grew much slower and went into cocoons shorter in length than the caterpillars at the constant temperature. By the fifth instar, fluctuating temperature caterpillars were 34% shorter than the caterpillars in the constant temperature. I'm Kelly Nail, and I'm a scientist with Driven Discover, and I'm here today with a citizen scientist who I'm going to let introduce herself. I'm Elizabeth Meister, and I'm at St. Hubert School, and I've been working with Cindy Peterson this year at the Peeper Meadow, and we've been monitoring monarch population there. We were wondering how you came up with this experiment, especially since you used Cecropia moss when your Driven to Discover group was a monarch group. Well, my teacher got some Cecropia moth eggs, and so I got the chance to use those in the project. And they're just kind of different, you know. I worked with monarchs last year. I wanted to try something new, learn some new stuff. And I've always been kind of interested in global warming, so I wanted to do an experiment with that, too. Could you tell us what you did on a daily basis to go through your experiment? Like, what exactly did you do to find the answers to your question? So, about every... Every day, like every 24 hours, I would move my fluctuating temperature treatment caterpillars. I would either bring them upstairs and plug them in so they would warm up to about an average of 90 degrees, or I would bring them downstairs and keep them in the basement for an average of 63 degrees. And about every two days, I would measure the average length of them and record the instar stage. And was there anything surprising about your results that you weren't expecting? Yeah, you know, I actually thought that the fluctuating temperature caterpillars would have a much lower survival rate than the constant temperature caterpillars, but it was actually about the same, so that was really surprising. Definitely. Can you tell us about any complications you ran into when you were doing your experiment, and how you ended up getting through those complications? Well, you know, sometimes the caterpillars were really sensitive, so if you'd, like, accidentally touch them, they'd, like, curl up in a ball, and then I'd have to, like, set them aside and wait for them to uncurl, so it was, like, even when I measured them to their full length. Can you tell us what was fun about your project or what you enjoyed the most when you were doing it? Well, you know, I really liked when I measured them. You could just, like, over the days see them grow, and that was really cool. And they get really big sometimes, too, so... It was really fun because they would like crawl on your fingers and you just watching them grow and rearing them up into cocoons. It's really cool to watch. Can you tell us either how this project with Mrs. Peterson, the monarch monitoring, or this project that you did with Cecropias influences your day-to-day -day life now or what you want to do in the future? Well, science has always been my favorite subject and I've always kind of wanted to be a scientist. So. It's like getting an early start and learning some skills that I'll need later on. And in life, it like helps you look at the big picture in the world, just not like what, how you're affected by something, like how everybody is affected by it. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs>